So we've just finished plotting the Bode magnitude plot. Now we turn our attention to the Bode phase plot. And the main thing to look for here, in addition to the zeros and the poles, is whether or not there is a negative sign out front. If there was a negative, we would do um, a phase offset of 180. In this case, the phase, or there, there is no negative sign, so our phase offset is zero. Let's go ahead and set up the, the graph. Um, again, the lowest frequency breakpoint is at 20 radians per second. The highest is at 20,000. So I'm going to make my graph extend a decade below and above this range. So having completed my properly labeled plot, so we need to say what the axis labels are and the units. Let me begin with the zeros. We have a zero at 200 radians per second. So that means that 200 radians per second, we have a phase shift of 45, a plus 45. At 2,000, we have a phase shift of 90. So essentially, we find our breakpoint and put 45 there, and then find a decade below. That's your zero, and find a decade above, and that's 90 degrees, and it stays 90 degrees after that. We also have a zero at 2,000, so identify the decade below, decade above, Let's sketch that in there. And of course, it was zero before, and then it's 90 degrees after that. Poles give a total contribution of minus 90 degrees. So the pole centered at 20 gives us a minus 45 shift. Decade above, we're at minus 90. constant 90 after that. The other pole is at 20,000 radians per second. So there's the minus 45, decade above, decade below. And of course it's again minus 90 degrees after that. So to construct the composite, which I'll draw in red, um, let's see, starting at the beginning at 2 radians per second, we have one contribution of minus 45 degrees per decade. Then during the second decade, the zero kicks in, so that cancels out here. We're left with a constant. Now, during the next decade, you have to be careful here. This is a constant at the bottom, so nothing happens there. This gives us a plus 45 degree per decade, and this gives us another 45 degree per decade. So that means we have a total change of 90 degrees in one decade. So if I start here, at the end of the decade, I need to be up a total of 90 degrees. During the next decade, uh, again, here we have a constant. That one's a constant now, so they are pretty much out of the picture. Here we have one going up. Here's one going down. So they add together as a constant. And during the last decade, the only player is down here. And after that, everything's a constant, so the phase ends up at zero. So as before, let's compare that to the computer-generated graph. At this point, I'm assuming you already heard the discussion on the 
forming the magnitude plot. So essentially we need to get, I'll jump back here, we need to get our transfer function defined and then evaluate that at S is J omega. There's the magnitude plot. For the phase plot, again this is a semi-log since we're doing a Bode plot. Phase we get using the maple function argument of h of j omega. To convert that into degrees, I multiply by 180 over pi. And again, I encourage you to take a look at the remaining details there, uh, especially one called num, whoop, num points right there. Uh, I find that in the lower frequency decades, sometimes the plotting resolution can be pretty bad unless you increase that manually. And even even here, you can see in the lower decade that with this straight line, that's not quite right, but that's about the best I can do without really putting the num points up a lot higher. So looks pretty good. It starts at zero, takes a dip down to minus 45, heads back up to plus 45, and comes back down to zero. So that matches the form that we created by hand.